<laughs> Middle one. Alright, so this is chapter 5, and um, what you have to find in chapter 5 is the different uh, bending moment diagrams. In order to find the stress or maybe a length in this problem, you have to find H. So you're going to design this beam. Uh, they give you the allowable stress in the beam. They say it's 12 MPa, and they want you to determine H. So what you're going to have to do is first find the reaction forces at A and B. So let's draw a free body diagram of this beam. Okay, so this is a free body diagram of A, B, C, D. So you have a reaction force over here at A, this is F, A. Then you have a reaction force at B, this is F, B. And then you also have these uh, codes on top. This is 1.8 kilonewtons. This is 3.6 kilonewtons. <coughs> All right, and you have these distances. Okay, you have 0 0.8 meters, 0 0.8 meters, 0 0.8 meters. Okay, so they're equidistant from each other. All right, so how are we going to find FA or FD? Sum the moments at A or D. So let's sum the moments at A to get F D. Okay, so you have uh, 0 0.8, this is minus, multiplied by clockwise, 1.8 minus 1.6 multiplied by 3.6 plus 2.4 multiplied by FD is equal to zero. Okay, so from this, from summing the moments at A, you could find out FD. So FD is equal to three kilonewtons. Okay, that's great. So we found the reaction at D. Now we want to find the reaction at A. What could you do? So Some only forces in the Y. What? Some of the forces in the Y. Some of the forces in the Y, yeah. This is just statics. Uh, Summing forces in the y direction should be zero, taking upwards to be positive. You have FA plus FD minus 1.8 minus 3.6 is equal to zero. So FA plus FD is equal to, what is this, uh, 5.4? Yeah, 5.4. Okay, so FA is equal to. Just move FD over, you get, um, for FA, you get 2.4 kilonewtons, okay? All right, so now we have the reactions at A and D. So we want to know, um, we want to know what's happening in this beam at each section. So we want to cut the beam between A and B, we want to cut the beam between B and C, and you want to cut the beam between C and D, okay? So we want to know where the moment is max. Where the moment, the maximum moment is important because when we find the stress, that's what we're going to use, okay, to determine H. We want to find the maximum moment in this beam, right? So, um, all right, so we're going to have to draw three free body diagrams of this beam. So let's start with the free body diagram between A and B. <laughs> So this is from 0 is less than, this x is less than uh, 0 0.8, and this is meters. Okay, so this is a free body diagram between A and B. I'm cutting it right before B, okay? I'm going to label this distance x because it's, it could be any, any length in between A and B. So I'll label that x, right? There's this reaction force over here, Fa which is equal to, I just erased it, FA is 2.4 kilonewtons, right? And what do we have, what, what type of forces do we expect if we cut it over here? 
there's, there's an internal force, right? So there's a shear force, and what else is there? So V, and there's also a moment, of course, yeah. Remember, this has to be in static equilibrium. Okay, With, without this moment, it wouldn't be in static equilibrium. Okay, so uh, we want to solve for V and M, because we want to get, uh, we want to get the shear force throughout this beam, and we want to get the moment throughout this beam. Then we can draw the shear uh, diagrams and the bending moment diagrams, and then determine H, when we find the maximum moment from this constraint. Uh, okay, so let's sum the forces in the y direction. So you have FA minus B is equal to zero, so B is equal to FA, which is equal to 2.4 kilonewtons. Right? Okay. That was easy. All right. And uh, let's sum the moments at A. This point A over here. Okay. So summing the moments at A because we want to solve for M. Okay. You could sum the moments over here too. It doesn't really matter. You'll get the same result. Okay. So um, you got minus Vx plus M is equal to zero. You guys understand that? The moment's going uh, counterclockwise, so that's positive. You just, it's just, we're summing the moments at A. Okay, so we found V is equal to 2.4. So M, what was So the moment is equal to Vx which is equal to 2.4 X. Okay? So that's a moment between A and B. Uh, it's a linear relationship. Okay, so now, now that we have this, we want to draw another free body diagram between um, A and C. Okay. Can I erase this? Oh, 
should it change this on top? Okay, so the first one went from from zero is less than x is less than <coughs> zero point eight. The second one is between uh, it's zero point eight is less than x is less than one point six. And now the third one is from uh, 1.6 is less than x is less than uh, 2.4. Okay, so we're analyzing this section over here. Okay, so draw the beam a little bigger. Now we're including this uh, 3.6 kilonewtons. Okay, so we have a shear force and also a moment. Okay, so we, we're, we're always interested in just this, wherever you're cutting it. Okay, so let's sum the force in the y direction again. Okay, so you have FA minus 1.8 minus 3.6 minus B is equal to 0. So B is equal to it's minus 3 now. Okay. Okay, FA is 2.4. All right, um, and now let's sum the moments at A. Taking counterclockwise to be positive, you have uh, minus 0 0.8 multiplied by 1.8. Uh, oh, I didn't draw the distance. This distance over here is 1.6 meters, and this distance to, from A to B where we cut it is x. Okay? Um, Alright, so we have minus 1.6 times 3.6, and then we also have minus bx plus m is equal to 0. Okay? We want to solve for m, we just solve for b, so we get m is equal to minus 3x plus 7.2. Okay. All right. So we, we we got everything now. Everything we need, we have. Okay. So now we can draw the shear and bending moment diagrams. Okay. So let's start with the shear diagram first. the values again just to recap. So from um, so B is equal to for the first part from 0 to uh, is less than X is less than uh, 0 0.8. You have B is equal to 2.4 kilonewtons. Okay this is from 0 is less than X is less than 0 0.8. This is meters of course. Okay. Now we also have when we broke it up over here in between B and C, we had B was equal to 0 0.6 kilonewtons. And that was from 0 0.8 is less than X is less than 1.6 meters. Okay? And then you had, finally, when you cut it between C and D, you had B is equal to minus 3 kilonewtons. Okay, and that's from uh, 1.6 is less than x is less than 2.4 meters. Okay, and then also I should write the moment equations. I forgot to add those. Okay, so the moment between those values, so m, uh, m was what? Uh, okay, so m was equal to 2.4 x. M, in this case, between b and c was equal to... Um, 0.6x plus 1.44, and then m was equal between uh, 1.6 to 2.4, the end of the mean. It was minus 3x plus 7.2, okay? So now that we have this, um, now we want to draw the shear diagram, and I guess I'll draw it over here. This is a shear diagram. Okay. Right? And our distances is 0 0.8. Uh, 
uh, 1.6, and then you got 2.4, right? That's a 15. <coughs> All right, and what's the values we got for the shear? We got 2.4. This is in kilonewtons, by the way, and this is in meters. Okay, so the shears you get is uh, 0 0.6 kilonewtons and 2.4 kilonewtons, and then you have minus 3, so it's all the way down here. Minus three, okay? So what does it look like? Yeah, well, our shears are constant, right? So our shear forces are constant. So from zero uh, to zero to eight, uh, point eight, sorry, it's just flat line, right? And then it drops down, and then it's flat again at 0.6 kilonewtons, all the way to uh, 1.6, right? And then it drops down to negative 3. So it's straight down to negative 3. Whoops. And what happens at the end of the beam? It goes back up. It goes back up to what value? Zero. Yeah, the shear force at the end of the beam is 0. Exactly. All right? So this is your shear diagram. This part is negative. Okay, so that's your shear diagram, and now you want your bending moment diagram. I'll just draw it over here. equations what the maximum moment is at each section. So what value for x are you going to plug in for m over here between 0 is less than x is less than uh, 0.8? Do you know what value you're going to plug in? Where are you going to have the greatest moment between this section? 0.8. Yeah, who said that? That was right. But yeah, okay. yeah. That's good. Okay. So the moment at point A, so the moment at point A, when you plug in point A over here, the moment you get is uh, 1.92 kilonewton times a meter, okay? So you want the maximum moment here, so you're going to plug in for X now 1.6. You guys follow? So the moment you get here is 2.4 kilonewton times a meter. And then the moment here, you're going to see this slope is negative, so it's going to drop down back to zero. So when you plug in 2.4, you should get zero for your moment. Okay. So what it looks like is this. Um, your first value is over here, let's call this 1.92. And then up here is, uh, what is it? The maximum is 2.4 kilonewton meters. And then you have, it goes back to zero. Okay, so this is 0.8. 1.6, 2.4, okay, so what does it look like? Over here at point 0.8, it's over here, and then at point 0.6, it's over here. Okay, so you have that, and then it drops down back to zero. So, um, obviously, this is, this is a, a positive slope, it's 2.4x, so you have a line like this, and then you have a line with a smaller slope, the way I got it was kind of bad. But, okay, let me erase this. Okay, so it's, this isn't constant. This slope is supposed to be greater. Uh, let me draw this up a little more so you can see that. So it looks like this, and then it's like flatter. Do I see that? This slope is greater than this slope, so this should be sloped a little higher up, and this is more flatter. And then it drops back down back to zero. Okay. So this this is 2.4x. This is 0.6x plus 1.44. And this is minus. This slope is minus 3x plus 7.2. Okay. All right. So this is your moment diagram. Okay. So we. 
so what, what are we looking for? We're looking for age. We have an allowable stress. What we were really interested in, in this bending and shear diagram, you really want to find where the uh, maximum bending moment is. Okay, if you're doing a transverse shear problem, you're going to want to know where the maximum uh, shear uh, is in the beam. Okay, so we want to know where the moment is max. So this is the maximum value. 2.4 is over here. Okay, so we found that value. Now we can find h. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the problem. It's pretty simple. It's just tedious drawing all these free body diagrams. Okay, I'm going to erase this. So now that we have everything, we want to find H. So we have sigma allowable is equal to M Y over I. You guys have been using this all along. It's a bending stress, okay? So um, we found our maximum moment. I should label this. This is max, okay? Um, we found that. What's Y in this case, okay? This is a cross section, so the neutral axis is in the middle. So this is N, A, that's a neutral axis. So what's Y? Huh? H divided by 2, yeah, exactly. Okay, so Y is H over 2, and you know I is 112 B H cubed, okay? So you have sigma allowable is equal to F max multiplied by H over 2 and the, uh, the moment of inertia is 112 B H Q. Okay? They gave you the value for B, you want to find H. Okay, let's just simplify this first. So you have sigma allowable is equal to M six times, if you bring the 12 up, it's six times M max all over B H squared, right? Okay, so now you have your expression for the bending stress. You want to solve for H. So you could move h over here, so you get h is equal to the square root of 6m max all over b sigma allowable. Okay, you guys agree? <laughs> okay, so if you stick in everything, you have the square root of 6 times 2.4 times 10 to the third newton times a meter uh, divided by B in this case, it gave you B is 40 millimeters. So B is 0 0.04 meters multiplied by the allowable stress. They gave you that in the problem. It's 12 times 10 to the 6 uh, PA. Okay, so now you can get H. Bringing this up here, H is equal to 172.5. So you have to, when you design this beam, H should be at least this value. It could be greater, but if it's under this value, what's going to happen to the beam? It's going to break. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so um, that's it for chapter five. That's pretty simple. And then uh, I got one more problem for you guys. So this is the whole chapter five. All the problems in chapter five are the same. You're just, it's just beams, so there's no variation. But now I'm gonna do chapter six. And uh, this is more difficult, transverse here. So uh, if you look how it's uh, derived, you'll understand it better. But um, I feel like a lot of you are gonna be confused. I can't say a lot, but I feel like a few people need to go to with transverse shear.
Okay, you have this beam, this section 10 n. They give you this as 0.3 meters, and they give you the total length of the beam is 1.5 meters. Okay, and they give you this force over here as 10 kilonewtons. <coughs> Okay, and they ask for the largest shear stress in NN. Okay, so we're going to have to draw a free body diagram with NN. But what you'll notice, if you draw a free body diagram with this whole thing, what's going to be the shear, the shear stress throughout this beam? It's just going to be 10. Anywhere you cut it, it's going to be 10. If you cut it here, you have a shear force here, and then you have a bending moment, it's just going to be 10. It, wherever you cut it, it doesn't matter. Okay? So um, that's all we need to really find. You know, I'll, I'll go through it, but you don't really need to do this. But if you want to draw a free body diagram of the whole thing, find the reaction and then cut it at N, you have this. Okay, so this is a free body diagram of the beam. I should give you the whole, okay, they give you the cross section. I forgot to give you this. This is a cross section of the beam. And they give you point A. That was part of the second problem. So this is this distance is 40 millimeters. This distance over here is 200 millimeters. This is 12 millimeters. 12 millimeters. And um, This whole distance over here is 150 millimeters, okay? Um, and they also give you, in this section, the part of the eye, this is 100 millimeters, okay? All right, so we have all the dimensions. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram of this thing. Okay, there's 10 kilometers over here. Right, and there's going to be a reaction here. I'll call this point W. Okay, so FW. You don't, you don't have to do this, but uh, I'll just show you this in this case. Okay, so what do you have? What other reaction force do you have here at the wall? If you cut at the wall, you have a moment. Yeah. So um, M is going to be going that way. So we have this distance, which is 1.5 meters. Okay. So let's find for the reactions. Uh, summing the forces in the y direction to be zero, taking off force to be positive. You have FW minus 10 is equal to zero. So FW is equal to 10, which we would expect. Kilometers. Okay, it's going to be 10 throughout the beam. All right, and now you want to sum the moments at the wall too. To be zero, taking counterclockwise to be positive. You have uh, minus. 1.5 multiplied by 10 uh, plus m is equal to zero. So m is equal to 15 kilonewton times a meter. Okay, that's great. All right, so now we want to cut in section mm. Uh, sorry, nn. So let's do that. So we want to know what's going on in that section. So this is a free body diagram of N, N now. So I cut it at N, N. Okay, so this was 10, correct? And this is 15 kilonewton times a meter. All right, so what do you have here? What do you cut at N, N? There's a shear force and a bending moment. So this is V, N, N, right? Okay, so if you sum the forces in the y direction to be zero, taking up force to be positive, you have FW, Minus V is equal to zero, so V is equal to FW, which is equal to 10 kilonewtons. And then you also have, when you sum the moments at the wall, you'll solve for M. So you have um, M, which is positive, plus, now, um, did I put it in the right direction? This is M, okay. So this is MW. Um, 
it doesn't matter, you'll get the value as negative. So you have mw, which is positive, minus m in section nn, and then you have uh, minus 0 0.3 multiplied by uh, v, okay, is equal to 0. So you can solve for m, you know this is 15, and you know this is 10. So m is equal to 12 kilonewton times a meter. Okay, so this is the moment over here in this section. Okay, um, and now that you have that, you didn't really need to find it, but now you know the shear force in that section. So, um, when you're calculating the sh uh, transverse shear, you have to know this formula. So the transverse shear is equal to uh, VQ over IT, right? <clears throat> And they're asking for the largest, the largest uh, transverse shear. And where do you think the largest transverse shear is going to be? Lowest thickness. Huh? The lowest thickness. No. Neutral axis. Well, it's, yes, the neutral axis, whoever said that, you're right. Okay, it, yeah, it, it doesn't matter where the, it's, it's always at the neutral axis. So that's what I was looking for. This is max, always at the neutral axis. Okay. So, um... Alright, so I could erase this then. Alright, so we found V. This is what we had to find in the section. That V is 10, but we're, we already knew it's always going to be 10. So that's a V in here. But we have to find Q and I and T. I, you guys know how to find, that's easy. The only thing I can see you guys messing up is Q. Okay? No problem. <laughs> okay. So, right. Okay, so that's the formula. We need this formula. Okay, so, um, all right, so this is a cross section of the beam, right? The neutral axis is in the middle. This is N, A, right? So we're going to have to calculate the moment of inertia. Let's just do that first because you guys know how to do that already. So we'll break this part into a rectangle, this into a rectangle, and this one. So I'll call this one, two, and three. <laughs> all right, so I1 is equal to 112. B1 H1 Q, right? No parallel axis theorem because it's at this uh, neutral axis. So I1 is equal to 112 times B in this case, which is 100, times H, which is this distance over here from here to here is what? It's 150 minus 24, which is uh, 126. So that's this, this, this distance over here. This is 126 millimeters. Okay. Cubed. So uh, I1 is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the 7 millimeters to the third. Okay. So we want to solve for I2 now. Well, I2 is equal to what? I2 and I1 are, uh, I2 and I3 are the same, right? Okay, the distances are the same. This is D3. And this is D2. This is the middle. Okay, so those distances are the same. You're going to need the parallel axis theorem because it's away from the neutral axis. So you have uh, I2 is equal to I3, which is equal to 112 times B2 H2 Q plus A2 D2 squared. Okay, so um, I2 is equal to I3, which is equal to 112. B in this case is 200 uh, millimeters multiplied by H in this case is 12 plus, and this is Q, plus 200 multiplied by 12, multiplied by the distance squared. The distance squared in this case is what? It's 150 divided by 2. That's this distance subtracted by half of 12. Right? You guys agree? So what is that? 69. 69. My favorite number. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> squared. OK. All right, so I, I definitely have to edit that out. <laughs> All right, 
So <laughs> I2 and I3 is equal to 1.146 times 10 to the 7 millimeters to the 4. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so let's get uh, the total moment of inertia. So I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay, so I total is equal to 3.962 times 10 to the negative fifths meters to the fourth. Okay. Uh, oh, let me give you a little piece. In uh, millimeters, sorry, it's 10 to the 7 millimeters to the 4. Okay, because you found it all in uh, millimeters, but I'll also give you it in meters because we're going to have to convert it. Okay, so how would you get this into meters? You divide by 1,000 to the 4th power, so it's 3.962 times 10 to the negative 5th meters to the 4th. Okay, alright, so we got I. Uh, what's T in this case? If you want the maximum, we already discussed it's going to be at uh, the neutral axis. So T is just this section. So over here, it's, it's 100 millimeters. Okay, so we have T now. So T is equal to 100 millimeters. Now we just have to calculate Q. Q is what gets everybody. People just don't understand how to calculate Q. Okay. Um, I'm going to erase this now. You guys got it? Well, I think actually the most important thing to understand is um, when, for, for the bending stress, you know at the neutral axis it's zero, right? But for transverse shear, it's maximum at the neutral axis. That's the only thing you have to understand from this chapter. So it's switched. So if you can remember that, you'll be golden. Okay. So with that said and done, now let's calculate Q because that's the only thing that's left. Remember, this is a formula for transverse shear is VQ over IT. Uh, so we have everything except for Q. So now, we want to we wanna know how what the transverse shear is in this section over here. So this top half of the beam, right? Because we said tau max is uh, at the neutral axis. So we have this picture. Okay, this is the neutral axis. Okay, and it's a shaded region over here. That's what Q is. Okay, we want Q total. So I'm going to call this whatever. This is still 1 and this is 2, right? All right, so we, we're, we're gonna, we have to calculate the total Q, right? Because there's two different shapes, so there's going to be two Qs. Okay, so from Q, Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2, right? You guys agree? Okay, but what is Q? Q is just the area times Y bar. Okay, so Q total is equal to the area of 1, so A1 times Y bar 1 plus A2 times Y bar 2. Right? Okay, so the area in section 2, I should give you these dimensions. This is 100 millimeters. This is is what? Uh, it's half of, what's half of 126? 63. Okay. This is 63 millimeters, and then we also have this as 12, right? 12 millimeters. Uh, okay, we set this value as 69. Okay, millimeters. I don't know why it's so funny. I just like the number. Okay. Alright, so. <laughs> Okay. Um, we, I, okay. So we. Oh, and this value over here, the dimension over here is 200 millimeters, right? Okay. So we got everything. That's good. Okay. So Q total. The area of one is uh, 63 multiplied by 100. Okay. And then Y bar is what? It's just half of 63. So I'll 63 divided by two, and then um, we have plus. A2, which is um, 12, multiplied by 200. And then that's multiplied by um, Y bar is 69. We found that already. <coughs> okay. So this is Q total, right? 
Q total is equal to, that wasn't that hard, right? You guys agree? We're good. Uh, Q total is, um, Q total is 3.64 times 10. I reverse them. I put A2 and oh, Y2. That's why I was getting confused. Uh, this is minus 4 meters cubed. Okay. So we got Q total. All right. So we have everything now. So now we can find tau max is equal to uh, 10 times 10 to the third. Remember, it was 10 kilonewtons times Q, we just calculated, this is 3.64 times 10 to the negative 4 meters cubed, all over I, we calculated, I total is 3.962 times 10 to the negative fifth, 3.962 times 10 to the negative fifth uh, meters to the fourth multiplied by I, and we said I in this case is just this, the thickness of the I beam over here, so it's 0 0.1 meters, right? Okay. So tau max is equal to 9, 19, uh, sorry, 919 uh, kPa. <coughs> Okay, so the second part of the question, they asked to find the transverse shear at A. Okay, so what changes? Q. Q, just Q, yeah. Okay, so everything else is the same. Now just Q is changing. All right, so can I erase this? You guys got this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the second part of the question, they want to know what the transverse shear is at A. I'll leave this and I'll cheat. Cheater. Okay. All right. So now, now we're cutting it here. So now we just have this, right? Okay. So this is still, this is still one. Okay. The neutral axis is over here. Um. Okay. So they give you this distance over here is 40 from the top of the beam to A. Okay, so this is point A, and this distance over here is 40. <coughs> this is still 100 though, this is 100 millimeters. Okay, so now we want to calculate Q total again. So the Q changes, you're right. The total moment of inertia is still the same, that never changes. V never changes and I never changes. Because I doesn't change in this section because A is over here. This is all the same section. The thickness T is always 100. Anywhere over here in this section is 1 is 100. Okay. So, all right. So now we want to get Q total again. So Q total is equal to, it's the same formula, A1, Y bar 1, plus A2, Y bar 2. But the only things that change is what? Y bar 1 and Y bar 2. Okay. So Q total is equal to, what's Y bar 1? It's from here to the center of this. This is y bar 1. And y bar 2 is measured from the neutral axis to up here. It's still 60 knots. Okay. But what, what, what is y bar 1? It's, uh, if you do it, um, this distance, right? This distance is uh, 63 from there to there. But th what's this distance over here? 13. That distance is 40 minus 12, which is what? 40 minus 12 20. is uh, 28. Yeah, 28. Okay, so uh, 63 minus what? 28 over 2, right? So that should be 40, 49. 49, yeah. Okay, so y, uh, y1 is 49. So this is uh, 100 multiplied by 28. Sorry, the area does change. Um, y1 is 49 plus the area 2, which is 12, 
times uh, 200 multiplied by 69. Okay, so Q total is equal to Three point zero three times ten to the negative four meters cubed. Okay, so now you can get tau a is equal to v q over i t, and now q changed. So the value you get is after substituting, you get seven hundred and sixty-five kPa. Okay. All right. So this is the value of q. I is the same, and t is the same. Thank you.